Good evening. Welcome to the internet. Pop pickers, cats and kittens. We have a treat for you this evening on Limbic TV. Two gentlemen, two impresarios of the blues have found themselves in the Alapasonics sound stage. We'll be talking blues. We'll be playing blues. So get yourselves ready. Maybe pour yourselves a little, a little small libation, you know what I mean? And uh, get ready for uh, the blues. So, let's introductions first. We have uh, before me, we have Messrs. Mottershead and Ronneberg, Toby and Dirk. These are the men who are going to entertain you this evening. Okay, shall we get on with the show, gentlemen? Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Nice to be here. Splendid. Take it away. All right. Let's start off with a tune by uh, Blind Willie McTell. This one's called Savannah Mama. <laughs> Blind Willie McTell, one of my favorite uh, yeah. songsters, you know, he, he was a blues player, that was a, a track from the early years. He was years. a salty dog. Yeah, he was a salty dog, but he started out playing, you know, the, the blues that was popular in the late 20s, mm -hmm. so the early, early years blues, but he was from Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. Statesboro, so, um, and obviously Savannah is a region on the outskirts of Georgia as well, mm -hmm. so he wrote a lot about, you know, the places that he grew up around. But obviously, being blind, what was unusual about Blind Willie was that he managed to get education at mm -hmm. a local blind school All right. at some point in mm -hmm. his formative yeah. years. And obviously, he was an incredibly intelligent person, so he absorbed the teachings. Yeah. And um, rumor has it that he, he was very mobile, you know, and he became like a real traveling ah, blues player. Yeah. And uh, he got around, you know, yeah. he went and saw some places. So he, <laughs> he, he saw some places. Yeah. He saw, <laughs> he saw, he those saw places. some places. <laughs> I don't know what I did yeah, there. Exactly. <laughs> but he went, he certainly went some places. <laughs> some places saw him. Um, anyway, what comes through in Blind Willie's music for me is this the strength of his character. You know, there's this like personality. In I there. think you had to be, Toby, you know? Yeah. Being blind, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing. And growing and up black, in the deep south. And then in the deep south, I think yeah. you've got to have a bit of strength of character Absolutely. To, to get on. Yeah. Well, it's funny, because that song's quite a, a early pre war kind of 
heavy blues, it yeah. would be called. But Blind Willie was famous for playing lots of different types of blues. You know, he played a lot of gospel music, mm -hmm. he sang oh, hokum yeah. songs, popular songs. Yeah. He wrote a lot of his own material yeah, as well, yeah. you know. Um, excuse me for a second while I just get this guitar into a favorable key for my uh, companion mm -hmm. here. Ah, yes. Yes, out of that. Te crazy technical key. jiggery pokery. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? <laughs> Keys. Keys and tunings. Yeah. So tell us a bit about, you know, as we were saying, we, we mentioned, uh, mentioned it briefly earlier yeah. about Blind Willie and the connection between why such an inordinate amount of these early blues players were blind. You know mm. I mean? So why do you think that was? You know what I mean? Oh, well, it was probably due to a lack of medical treatment for, yeah. for basic, you know, yeah. uh, illnesses that were around at that time. Yeah. Um, so poverty would be a, a, yeah. a, a you know, social, social... Uh, if they existed issues. in a more socially, uh, what's the word, socially developed country, they wouldn't have had to have actually got out well, there. Things might have been diagnosed yeah, know, and they could right. have had very basic treatments, yeah, you know, yeah. for things. And yeah, so that was definitely a factor. On, in other cases, there are some blues players who had... Um, like Blind Willie Johnson, for mm -hmm. instance, had well, lie he, thrown in his he eyes. He was right? blinded so the chemical by, was thrown by his, in his own eyes. mother. Yeah, so that's that's in a you fit know. of sexual peak. And the only thing to do when that happens to you is play gospel music for the rest of your and, life. Well, and well, some of the did. most amazing gospel music you've ever heard, you know. Well, as you know, you know that you know the disc that's on whatever it was. On uh, the Voyager. Voyager. Voyager, yeah. Blind Willie Johnson is on that record. He is Absolutely. he is in he is in outer space, which is just <laughs> incredible. Chuck Berry's also on the same record. Mm -hmm. Yes. Chuck's in space. And so. Beethoven, I, right well, next to Blind Willie, the, the B section. The true blues men, all, yeah. the, all, the, all, the, all the great, you know what I mean? All the greats of the Delta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you tuned and ready to go? Yes, indeed. You're gonna play some Lonesome Blues. Gonna, we're literally gonna play Lonesome Blues. Gonna do a tune by two um, sort of country musicians from the early 1930s called oh, yeah. uh, Roy Harvey and Leonard Copeland, mm -hmm. and uh, they did this guitar duet. Right. Um, but we're going to do it with uh, our two stringed instruments, and it's a little tune called the Weary Lonesome Blues. Weary Lonesome um, Blues. On the the earliest recording of this piece, Roy Harvey introduces the song, and he says, uh, in his country drawl, he says, "Now wherever I feel down and lonesome, I always <laughs> pick up my old Gibson guitar and play that Weary Lonesome Blues." <laughs>
Or what an audience. Mm, one yeah. person. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's better than none person. There's an international mm. audience of at least scores. 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 I'm sure we're in double figures. Tens of people. Tens of thousands. Tens and tens of thousands of people listening mm. in the blues. Now, that was a sweet tone you had there on the, on the, on the, on the fiddle there, Dirk. So, right, yeah. perhaps you could enlighten me. What is the difference between a fiddle and a violin? Ah, uh, well, if it, I've heard if it has a case, it's a violin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. If it has a case, it's yeah, a yeah. violin. There we go. i got to talk into the microphone. Sorry about that. Sorry, it's, an, it's an oldie, the it's a goldie, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's also true. Yeah, yeah. if it's if You're it's asking the right guy for the, uh, yeah. the golden jokes. <laughs> did it did it come here in a in a, in a black poly bag? You know, yeah, I mean, exactly. a, a bin bag. You know depends what I mean? on it, it. It's also dependent on the who's uh, who's the nut at the end of the bow. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> now, quite a lot of people, you would think, you know, they think blues, they don't think violin or fiddle. You know what I mean? No, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Although there's lots of the fiddle music. was in the early days of blues was was a prominent instrument. Mississippi you know what Sheiks, mean? yeah, you know, yeah, those exactly. old string yeah. bands, yeah. yeah, they were very very prominent. Banjos, uh, and so very, uh, the fiddle player. It's a very yeah. vocal instrument, yeah, so yeah. It, has, it can do all those bends and things. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense to. It's great for yeah. play, playing fiddle tunes on as well. It's <laughs> also good for that, yeah, yeah. So a lot, obviously, a lot of these uh, fiddles were an accessible instrument. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and there's a, there were a lot of different kinds. I mean, some were just like cigar boxes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. It, it was what was available, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, very much. I mean, it wasn't until like, people like Sears and Roebuck started mass make, producing gu guitars that people got their hands on guitars, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Earlier players didn't have access to these kind of instruments. You know what I mean? Well, Pianos, a lot of times guitars. it was a piece of washing line strung up against yeah. the side of the house that they would then like, plug the old, and play with a slide. The Bo Diddley. Yeah. Now people are paying the price of a car for one of those old cheap instruments from the Sears <laughs> catalogue yeah, from yeah, the 1920s, yeah. you know, because yeah. it's a period piece. Yeah, but there, are, there, have been, there have been a number of Famous blues guys who could play the fiddle. Well, Bo Diddley being one of them, you know what I mean? Mm. He played the fiddle. As did uh, Clarence Gatemouth Brown, he played the fiddle. Uh, he played yeah. the fiddle very well. Yeah. Bo Diddley, I don't know. Yeah, I've never I, seen I, him play the fiddle. Bo don't know. I have seen I, him play guitar. Bo Diddley, he's played and I it, he, couldn't believe he had a career for that long. You know? Willie <laughs> McTell was another one. <laughs> yeah. Who's Bo Diddley? Yeah, you, it's one of the worst shows I've ever seen. I'm just going to say that. I can say that. It's my opinion. <laughs> I'm out of here. I've never been so offended in my life. Bo Diddley show. <laughs> yeah. Like the Johnny Cash show. But. I don't know. About yeah. the, no, no, no. The actual Bo Diddley. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they give me I don't know about, about, about a man who released the movie. 20 albums. Yeah, I know. I know. And I tell you, when I saw him... Incessantly about himself, constantly. Yeah, self mythologizing yeah, himself. Yeah. This Bo did the, the gunslinger. Bo did this. Bo did yeah, that. Bo, I know. That's genius. It's, you know I mean? It is. It was, well, I mean, well played. Well played. Yeah. Nobody In else the is going to do it. Sense. You know. Yeah, I know. Well, I think... You're going to do it for yourself. If you actually ask me, I would say, you know, more than in the 50s... All, all the all the out of the Chicago blues scene, Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry were the two bona fide geniuses of that scene because mm -hmm. they took blues music somewhere where it had never been. Yeah, rhythms were turning into rhythm I mean, blues. Mm -hmm. I mean that Bo Diddley rhythmically. Well, was just, and, I mean, and, and Muddy yeah. Waters, who I was also up there at the time, yeah. who, who turned it, started turning into electric blues and stuff. Yeah, yeah. To come into the music scene and, and create a rhythm and a groove that was called the Bo Diddley beat. I, I mean, know, exactly. You know, it's pretty it's, synonymous with him. It's not many musicians that He probably didn't a invent it either, him. but he, yeah. he, he <laughs> mixed the elements together to make it something. And it's really, you know, you know yeah. how it is when yeah. you're sitting there trying to make music. Like, try and come up with something that's no. different, you know? It's, a different. It's real difficult. Original. No matter what era you live in. No, no, oh. exactly. Um, no, he made it his own. He sure did. Without a doubt. Yeah. Anyway, terrible show though. I'm gonna say. Hopefully, hopefully this one will be better. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> anyway, so we've got the next one. Skin game. Skin game. Leave Bo Diddley aside. <laughs> this is <laughs> a Bo Diddley classic. classic. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk later, Doug. We'll talk later, right? <laughs> yeah. There may be fisticuffs. So, um, anyway. The, this is yeah. a tune by uh, uh, Pegleg Hal oh, yeah. that I learned, but I. I I actually was researching Skin Game because I'd been listening to uh, Jelly Roll Morton mm -hmm. speaking to Alan Lomax on those amazing recordings oh, yeah. where he just plays piano and talks yeah. and tells all these great stories, uh, quite unique. Yeah. And he told a story about um, meeting this, uh, this gentleman that didn't know how to play the Skin Game, you know. And it's a type of thing where you take a card off the deck and you... You save it for when you need it, and but well, you got to get it back in the day before the game ends. You get in trouble, you know. <laughs> so he he t telling this story, and he said, "I met up with this fine gentleman. He was a mighty fine card player and a rambling gambler." 
So we headed over to this place in uh, Texas. So I could play some piano shows, and I was going to make some money. Yeah. He told, on the way there, he told me how to play this uh, skin game, you see. So when we got in there, we got up in a game of cards, and I thought, oh, let me try my hand, you know. So he went in there and did it, but he did it real clumsy, and the guy sprung him, and the guns got pulled. All and right. the other guy had to, yeah. like, like, calm everyone yeah. down and, like, yeah. say, let's just get this back on track, played a few rounds, and then they got out of there with the, the money and their lives. But yeah. if he wasn't with this, this geezer, he told the story much better than I do, but yeah. that was the, the, the long and tall of it. So that led me to, to research skin game as a, as a thing. And I found this tune by Pegleg Hull, who um, was not blind. Ah. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, to my but, knowledge, but, however, yeah, I mean, he, uh, he, he may have had have some other issues, you know I mean? uh, underlying <laughs> issue, health issues there. Yeah. Um, at least in the old days, if you're wrong, the, right. the old days, you knew where you stood with with the issues. You know, yeah. they put them right up front with the yeah. name. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. There was there was no pussy footing about in them days. Yeah. Just let's call that guy Peg like. Yeah. So, I mean, got a, got a slightly uh, you know uh, lower back pain, Johnny. You know, yeah. that's, that's my blues name. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to play you now a Peg Leg Hal's skin game. When I first came to Georgia, money and clothes I had me. Lost every penny that I made. I got my Sunday clothes in bone. Sunday clothes in bone. Sunday clothes in bone. Small but a very appreciative audience. Yes, I mean? my favourite kind. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to give up those big stadium gigs. You know, it's too much. It's too faceless. You know what I mean? No intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What about like talking about uh, playing these larger gigs? But mm. are you always acoustic, or are you? Where or do you use electrification to make yourself heard? Unless the venue kind of require me to amplify, I always check yep. when I'm when I'm doing the booking phase of a show. I'll always mm -hmm. be like, look. If it's a small room, I'll play completely acoustic. Yeah. And oftentimes, the people booking the show aren't, they don't know anything about mm -hmm. sound setup. Yep. They've just ah. got to get the, the, yeah. the talent in. So 
usually I'll, I'll try and get as much information from them as I can at the point of contact yeah. so that I can make that call myself. Yeah. But obviously you don't want to be under amplified in a, in a no, show. No, otherwise. People, especially if people are paid to see you. <laughs> you're drowned out. Yeah. It. But you could, be, you could be drowned out just by people talking. You know yes, I mean? of course. That's why I always take just, gags to my shows. And then you, you know, you, you're not getting anything from the show yourself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Then it becomes a wee bit. Give everybody an orange. <laughs> that, that sort of shut them up for the nah. first few songs. You know, the, Three the hands quarters. are all sticky. And yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, you play in the band. So do you tend to separate the two things? Electrification, playing with a band, mm -hmm. and acoustic, yeah. you know, like this. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think in in the past I used to play a bit of acoustic with the band, um, ah. but these days uh, um, playing a bit more like Chicago blues kind ah. of electric stuff. So yeah, yeah make the distinction ah. between the two, and keep it a bit more down home ah. and acoustic and you Simpler. know, you know th this instrument sounds great uh, in, oh, in, in a room. Yeah. Or bo both of these instruments, I should yeah. say, sound great in, ah. in a space. Yeah. you know, just uh, resonate in the way they're made. Well, exactly. There is amplification on that instrument, it's not really. and, that, and indeed that one. Cone, you know, yeah, those, yeah. Like, those sound holes do. Yeah, yeah, they get it up there, yeah. So exactly. I make mean, it louder a, than it. This is a primitive amplifier. It is, yeah. You know, the, the design of the cone inside yeah, of the... Yeah, the, exactly. the pie, the pie... Uh, exactly, yeah, it's a biscuit tin. The, the pie tin, <laughs> almost, yeah, inside. Yeah, exactly, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. It's, a, it's an amazing bit of technology. Pre-electricity pre yeah. amplification. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you've got one, since we're talking about that, yeah. the, that the national resonator there, you've got one more to play on it. Yeah, we're going to do, um, let me just put my fingers on here. I'm going to do some uh, Bo Carter next. And Bo Carter was one of the bluesmen who was the master uh, of the double entendre. It's yes. obviously a, a, a stylistic thing that was very prevalent in blues music. Um, and yeah. Can you enlighten our uh, international internet audience about some, what some of those double entendres were? Uh, well, he has a brilliant are we album. Pre -water, are we pre-watershed? Uh, uh, I, I think this we will, are pre-watershed. This, this will be above board anyway. We can anyway. risk it. There's, there's nothing wrong with bananas. I ha um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah he, he, he has a great album, which I, I love, of uh, a collection of his recordings called uh, Banana in Your Fruit Basket. Yes. Right. Which is, you know, it's one of your five a day, so yeah. that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> he's not in the territory. Bo, Bo Carter, one hell of a performer. Banana. One hell of a performer, <laughs> he, five a day. He at least cloaks his lewdness in, in a veil of, of, of metaphor and, and ah, double no, entendre exactly, and all yeah, of that. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Lucille Bogan, who yeah, we, we yeah, spoke about yeah. briefly before, no, that's is... Just, that's just in your it's face. It's all in that's... your face. Everything's in your face. Ah, uh, yeah, the, whole, the whole <laughs> shebang. This yeah. is not that, um, but th this is a tune called Cigarette Blues, which yeah. I assume is about, you know. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. <laughs> we hope. Or, well, they? hey, listen, you know, cigarettes could have meant something entirely different back then, you know, and which meaning has, has yeah. since disappeared. Anyway, Let's cigarette. All right. Cigarette Blues.
Good picking. Yeah. Now, we were talking about Bo Diddley's and Fiddles and other such uh, string wonders. But uh, as, us, as Toby's uh, changing his guitars here, uh, we're going to play just to show he's got other, sh was it, other strings to his bow <laughs> is the phrase. <laughs> yeah. See how I've said that? Uh, See how I've said that? Just to show that he's, uh, yeah, he's got other strings to his bow. That we're really we're going to play a little video. Uh, and here it is. Here it is. <laughs> this is blind archery. He's no ordinary masters. <laughs> it's, I think it's still playing on the web. Uh, the Japanese section's not started yet. The Bushid. All uh, right, and we're back in the room. Cool. So, Toby, blues actually. Uh, uh, a niche, a niche. Um, I definitely, I like, ni I like niche things. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely the niche so, things. So, what's the, uh, what's with the blues archery, well, or the blind archery? Blind archery. Uh, the blind, the blind archery is just something I tried recently. The archery in general is something I picked up last July during okay. lockdown. All right. And I'd always wanted to do it. I read a book by Eugene Herigel called Zen and the Art of Archery. Uh -huh. All right. About. Um, and you thought now is the time. Yeah. It just. It just, the algorithm found me, the, yeah. the, the moment came yeah. and, uh, and I took Everything it up. clicked. So I've been pursuing that uh, since and it's become a sort of daily practice to shoot the bow. Um, so the blind archery is just the evolution of me trying to, trying to find new ways to test myself and to All grow right. and to improve. Right. Um, I, I don't know why blind archery hasn't taken off. I mean, <laughs> I think I could be onto something here. Yes. Um, so that's, yeah, that's just something I'm doing to try and improve my technique. Um, because when you shut off one of your senses, especially your eyes, when you're usually aiming yeah. at a target, suddenly you, you become more aware of the sound around yeah. you and the sensations around you. So I found that a, a beneficial thing, uh, an aspect of it to sort of be more aware of your body mm -hmm. when you're shooting. Yeah. And the, the goal of that is obviously to shoot at very close range. But once you put the blindfold on, it's, it's still quite difficult to hit yeah, I, the, the middle of the imagine, target. Yeah. So uh, that, at that point, you have to tune into the uh, Jedi Matrix. Ah, <laughs> all right. That, 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 that takes matrix, years of yeah. practice. Yes. I've heard about that, yeah. that Jedi Matrix. <laughs> Jedi <laughs> Matrix. I learned that in Macclesfield. Ah, Je yeah. Jedi Matrix. Is that, is that known in the Peak District? You know what I, I think mean? it is. Just it's in just, between, it's in the liminal regions just, it's a between Lancashire and down, Yorkshire. Ah, just a couple of miles down the road from Port Shrigley. Port Shrigley. <laughs> I think it's near Ramsbottom. Yeah, all oh, right. 
You do get an ice cream tea there, you know what I mean? Jedi mm. Matrix. I have. Uh, they don't I can mess about. Tell the internet audience, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, aye. The, so, the archery, you're thinking. You're thinking maybe, you know, if the music doesn't take off, I'll. I'll, I'll run away and join the circus with the white actually. I'm not sure I can make money shoot here. Somebody. Yeah. 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 Or alternatively, yeah. We'll bring home dinner maybe. Serial at some point. killer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Novel serial All killer. Job descriptions. Yeah. yeah. We're looking for a blind yeah. archer. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I guess you know some some people do uh, sports and some people meditate and do yoga and things. For me, archery is kind of like a meditation as uh, well. It's you know right. that the video was shot I in my good. attic. Yeah. In my house, so I can go up there anytime and just be all right with the with the. So this is your bowl. attic. Yeah. So you've got a. You've, let's any, get this straight now. You've got an archery. What's the word? Dojo. A, <laughs> an archery dojo in the attic. You put you put me to shame. You know what I mean? He's learned archery and set set himself up an archery dojo. studio dojo stroke dojo in the attic. I spent the entirety of lockdown drinking pina colada and g and you know what I mean? What were you doing, Dirk? And nothing else. I was brewing beer. And then, uh, and then, and then someone, had someone had yeah. to drink it. Someone had to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll leave the number. You know what I mean? A bit of home brewing. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, ah, definitely. I'll see you later, Dirk. You know what I mean? Well, it seems like a, le a logical segue to go from talking about uh, being in lockdown yeah. to doing a song about jail time. <laughs> they were the same. Yeah. There was a, there's definite crossover there's there. I see what you've there. done there. Yeah. It's a beautiful segment. <laughs> so yeah. and you've you you've rearmed yourself with um, a new instrument. What I'm is that prepared. new instrument? So this is a, just a gypsy jazz style guitar. Right. Um not not traditionally associated with the blues. Is it French? It's a French design. It's this one isn't actually French. Oh, right. Um couldn't afford a French one, this is Chinese. Aye. Uh, <laughs> Aye. Well, some of the Japanese ones are very well made. I, no, and they're picking up in value, you know what I mean? Aye. Some of the Japanese and ones. well Korean instruments as uh, well from the eighties. Yeah, they're really good. Seventies yeah. Japanese guitars, sixties, seventies Japanese guitars. Will, they they make set you back, mighty right? fine things. Yeah. They anyway, all right. You're so rearmed. I rearmed. I'm going to do a song now by one of the early pioneers of uh, finger picking blues guitar, a fellow named Blind Blake, Arthur Blind Blake, and um, he was inspired by the piano music that was around him you mm -hmm. know, around the turn of the century, so that found its way into his guitar style. Um, he was a wonderful ragtime picker. This piece that I'm going to play is a bit more swingy, um, but it definitely bears the, the bass movement that he will have taken from piano players. Mm -hmm. um, and the recording that I learned it from was actually a duet between his acoustic guitar voice and a piano. And a piano. Yeah, yeah. cool. So anyway, uh, this one's called Doing a Stretch. Doing a Stretch. Take it away. <laughs> I had a fall, five and twenty-one When we get back, we're gonna have some fun Up a river, all gonna do a stretch, yeah Baby, baby, tell me the true facts You be waiting when I come back Up a river, daddy gonna do a stretch I told her water, you pay my fine. Didn't seem to pay me no mind. Off a river, daddy gonna do stretching. Good things you've done, I can't forget. If you quit, it'll be my death. Off a river, daddy gonna do stretching.
baby, oh, heart and soul. Stay by me till I make my parole. Up a river, daddy gonna do a stretch. Careful, honey, while I'm gone, you can be good. I'll be gone too long. Up a river, daddy gonna do a stretch. Thanks, Will. Now, to the best of my knowledge, Mr. Blake didn't do a stretch, did he? <laughs> I don't think he was very stretchy. Uh, no, was well, quite, uh, you know, he wasn't. Uh, he was a bantamweight, I think. He wasn't so. inside. Unlike, say, lead yeah. belly, don't mean famous. No, yeah, I don't think that, yeah, I don't think you have to go to jail to sing about no, going exactly. to jail. But yeah, I think, I, I think that's a good point to make about the blues. You know, people sort of say, oh, you've got to be, like, downhearted and you yeah, have yeah. to, like, have the uh, terrible alcoholism problem and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Like, you can... To you be know, genuine. Yeah, to be an artist. Well, you is can about... write a story about the point of view from a friend of yours, exactly, and whatever. Well, know, well, that's so. what writers do, isn't it? Yeah. And you know, when you're when you're the idea that you have to be messed up to be yeah. an artist is nonsense. You you yeah, should yeah. live a good, healthy life, and the the the, the artistry is being able to convey. Aye. Yes, the, exactly. The, but I suppose the, that, the human condition. Yeah, you know? but I suppose you do you do say you know someone with say a richer a life experience would be able to convey those things. Whereas I suppose someone, you know, I mean, as the blues got adopted by a white audience in the yeah. 60s and that, you had a lot of players who mimicked yeah. these blues players I amazingly think that's well. I think it's disgraceful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, exactly. <laughs> well, that's it. I Present think... company excluded. No, authentic... you, know, you know what I'm saying. They, authenticity... didn't live, they didn't live the life, but... You authentic... know. I think there's different types of authenticity. Exactly. There's cultural authenticity yeah. where, you know, you, you, you can never be black and from Mississippi. Yeah, exactly. So on that level of, of folk music. But then again, there are, you know, there are plenty of um, people from different cultures who come to Scotland to learn Celtic fiddle styles, right. you know, uh, right. from different regions. Yeah, of course. Um, every region has its own flavour, yeah. you know, as you know. And it's the same in, in the blues. Every region of blues music has its own little twist. There is, to the to the uh, untrained ear, the differences are minuscule. Ah, but yeah. when you're into the blues, the, yeah. those little differences yeah, yeah. are what make it interesting. Yeah. And for me, you know, sometimes uh, when I play this music, people will come up and say, who's your favourite blues mm -hmm. player, you know? Yeah. And I'll always say, I'm not really interested yeah. in favourites. Yeah. I like to jump, exactly. jump around and, and look at the differences between... Uh, like, I yeah. like to look at the gaps in between things, you uh. know? That's where uh, the interest is, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, thing, the thing is that the pigeonholes... I mean, pigeonholes are fine if you want to talk about... Like you say, minuscule... <laughs> if you're a pigeon, yeah. <laughs> But if you're talking minuscule differences, but, I mean, but yeah. organically, it, organically or as it was lived, you know, it's a much more... It's more. What's what's the word? It's more. It's it's not so confined. It's there's more miscegenation and crossovers and things mm. happening. You know what I mean? Yes. When and, and and essentially every artist encapsulated different elements and different things. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. Yeah. So well, the next tune we're going to play is uh, actually a tune of my own. And what I did was I put my head in the mindset of of Blind Willie McTell, and tried to kind of think like. You know what tune would Blind Willie was? Was alcohol involved in this uh, this altered state no, of consciousness? No, it was more of a it was more of the gauntlet was laid down by a friend who was like, "Can you write a song?" Ah, sort of in, thing, in the style of uh, yeah, and I was like, "Right, I'll do that." So I went away, and sometimes just a, a shove in that direction is yeah, all yeah. you need. And and truth be known, I hadn't written a song for some time, so I thought, right, I better better dust off the chops and <laughs> do this. So I wrote this one, and uh, and it turned out all right. I like this one. Um, it's called "Good Woman, You Can Do No Wrong." Well, I'ma tell you all about a girl I know She can sing a whistle, she can pick a banjo She got me so, I had to put it in a song Good woman, you can do no wrong Pick that thing, woman, you can do no wrong Well, I'm a 
thief for you, baby, but you're so long and tall. Every time I steal a kiss, I feel that I might fall. Oh, now I got to sing this song. A good woman can do no wrong. I'm falling down. Woman, you can do no wrong. I just want to inform the interweb audience that's out there that I did walk in when I came here this evening uh, to the Alipersonic uh, soundstage. These gentlemen were still rehearsing these songs, so these boys are winging it in the true tradition of playing the blues. <laughs> that is true, that is true. We, uh, Dirk and I, used to play together many years ago and uh, we used to play a Sunday session yeah. in the local bar along the road. Um, so we got a few years of... of, of just sessioning together and, and fell into each other's styles. We both have similar tastes. In, in you know different... where you are. Yeah. It's not so much off the cuff as up the sleeve. <laughs> so the, there was a story that um, when I was preparing for this gig, I did think, oh, I should send Dirk a set list, yeah. you know, weeks ago and, and get him prepared. But then there was a story that came into my mind that reminded me of an inspiration of mine for winging it. Mm. And it was the story about um, George Mitchell going down to record... Fred McDowell, Mississippi yeah. Fred McDowell. Mississippi, yeah. Right, and he went down there um, and found him. And, uh, On Fred the porch. Said, well, yeah, he was in, a, in, his, <laughs> in his shack, you know, yeah, like yeah. literally the real deal. But he said, look, I'll record for you, but I want to get, get this fella Johnny Woods on the harmonica. Yeah. Now, Fred hadn't seen Johnny Woods for eight years, yeah. but rumor was that he was back in town. He said, look, I've heard this guy's back in town. You better go get him. Yeah. So they went off with their party of, you know, white people in yeah. Mississippi looking for this guy. And they find Johnny Woods on the porch of this shack drinking, like, some moonshine. And there's yeah. a bunch of guys in back playing craps. And he's, yeah. like, off his face. Yeah. <laughs> so Fred shows up, and they all call him Shake Em On Down, uh, at the yeah, name of the yeah, popular yeah. song yeah. that he sang. Oh, how's it going, Shake Em On Down? Come in here, play some blues. Yeah. So he goes in there, starts playing. Johnny pulls up his britches and wanders in, fumbles in his pockets, eventually pulls out a harmonica yeah. and just starts playing. Yeah. And all the guys that went there to record him, they didn't have their equipment on uh -huh. them. They just found the guy. <laughs> So they heard what, what he was laying down and was like, shit, we've got we to gotta, like, get these two together. Yeah. So they said, look, Johnny, do you want to come over tomorrow and record properly with Fred? Oh, no problem, I'll be there. <laughs> so tomorrow comes around, Johnny doesn't show. <laughs> so they go looking for him. Three days later, they find him at a barbecue, still drinking, by the back of some truck, <laughs> drinking the wit liquor again. Yeah. So they say, look, we'll give you some more of this liquor stuff if you come and record this tune right now. Yeah. So he went over there and basically just sat down and recorded an album absolutely steaming yeah <laughs> hadn't seen the guy for eight years yeah. had a quick rehearsal the other day yeah. at the barbershop yeah. you know um and i thought you know what we don't need a rehearsal for this nah, exactly. let's just yeah. wing it. <laughs> let's just see what happens yeah, yeah. 
So what's the worst that can happen? Well, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it can't be that bad. Yeah. So we're going to go. What's next for us? Well, what I'd like to do next is a little tune that I learned from the repertoire of another um, person who is not from the original tradition. He's someone like myself who was just in love with the old time music. Yeah. And was a great exponent of it. His name was Leon Redbone. Ah. Um, and uh, he was a great, great influence. Is Leon on, still with us? He he passed away a couple of years ago. No, I believe. I did, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Uh, he was also a great exponent of the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and the linen suit. So well, really... the, the, listen, the, the, we're living through a golden age of Tash, are we There's not? There's a lot to be we? said for Tash, yeah, I mean, my friend. And the beard. Oh, well, uh, spotted by Dark over there. Yeah. Yeah. Not as full as some of the beards that are out there yeah, these yeah. days. You know, more, right? more of a goatee, I, I suppose. Yeah. I do. I have to take this opportunity to apologise to Mr. Redbone because he did ask us to please don't talk about me when I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> about me while I'm gone Now honey though our friendship ceases from now on Well if you can't say anything real it's better than to talk at all that's my No difference how I carry on Now honey, please don't talk about me while I'm I could have done with the help. <laughs> yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. Anyway, so we'll not talk about Leon Redbone. We'll talk about you two gentlemen. All right. And the blues, which, to all intents and purposes, is a minority niche. So, and, you know, you, you, you two are young bucks, so how come you found the blues or the blues found you? Who wants to go first? By all, by all means. All right. Well, I was I was young pretty young when I found it. I guess I stumbled across a Robert Johnson cassette tape that came with you started, a magazine. You went in deep. You went straight you, in on Robert Johnson. Your entry drug was Robert Johnson. Boom! Yeah, blew that, my mind. That's yeah. Absolutely blew my mind, and I just thought, what is this? Yeah. You know, and the thing is, listening to that as a young child with no cultural what reference age point, you talking, thirteen years old, all I would right. say. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know what it was ah, I was yeah. hearing, but I closed my eyes and you could see the landscape that the music came from yeah. and the sound of the slide guitar yeah. and the, the falsetto voice yeah, yeah. that he had, you know. Yeah. There was a lot of fire and brimstone in yeah, his I voice am. that he well, borrowed from the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and obviously the heavy blues was in there, the ragtime blues was so in there. So you're obviously intrigued by it. Very intrigued, and I thought, wow, that sounds like the coolest thing you could do yeah. with a guitar, right? Mm. Um, and then that just started me down a long and painful road of trying to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Learn. Well, there was no internet there was then. No, you know yeah, I mean? that back then it wasn't. No so. Mojo magazine, no, you know what I mean, where it explains everything. And, yeah. You know what I mean? You just had to find a little bit, meet someone who told you a little yes. bit, meet another person Go to who the told library. you something else. Yeah, yeah, oh, you know. yeah, the music library, yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 oh. These youngsters will know what we're talking make about. Up, make libraries. Up compilation well, tape. Library. Let's tell you what Remember libraries when there are. Remember libraries, <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> There won't go. be any left very soon. <laughs> because they had a limit. I think it was, I can't remember what it was, but it was like uh, you 12, 12, 12. You'd get you could 12 CDs, to, right? right? So you could go in and get 12 CDs, and I would go home and make oh, a, see, see, see. a compilation tape of the, yeah. the best of the Illegally. CDs. You know, <laughs> home taping is uh, killing is music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously not in this case. No, I mean, this, this, well, was, it was, this was the opposite of killing music. Yeah. It actually gave it new life. Do you remember when... Uh, somebody would give you a cassette tape and there was different types of cassette tape. There was the cassette tape that had nothing on it. It was just like, here, there's a tape. Ah. This is the shit. Yeah. And then other people would give you one and it would be like every every so track would have the tape. name of the artist and this yeah, tiny yeah. writing and stuff. The mixtape. You really were hot. When somebody gave you one of those and they spent yeah. the time to put it together and write all those things on, you were like, you, wow, you really like me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the mixtape. The yeah. old them. The mixtape. Remember those days? They'll never, we'll never know that. Now we have playlists. Hey, I'll yeah, send you a playlist. They'll oh, never know the mixtape. No. The, the youngsters. They'll, no. mean, they'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what, how significant the mixtape was. You know I mean? well, we're putting I'll out our do first you a album was a big deal. Mixtape, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you like to go, I'll do you a tape. You know what I mean? <laughs> That hoping was the that, ultimate. Like, hoping that I, some yeah. kind of hidden message would yeah. find its way in our <laughs> ear holes. What? And what <laughs> ear holes first. Ear holes first. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it clean. This is a family show. No ear holes. Uh, <laughs> so, what about you, Doc? How did you come to the blues? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I, I mean, had... you, you had an advantage, surely. Why was it? Why would that be? Well, I'm just going on that American accent. Oh, surely, yeah, well, you were a lot blue, closer. There'd be, blue, there'd be blues. I mean, I grew up. I mean, he was I told me he's in Macclesfield. I was in Edinburgh. We're, yeah. we're we're a long way away. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well. I know America's big, but you were still big. nearer. Well, I mean, yeah, but these days in the age of global radio, radio yeah. and stuff, I mean, yeah. it used to be said that you could tell exact before radio, you could tell exactly where someone was from based on where they played. I mean, like yeah. down to which, ah, like, yeah, yeah, like, like we're saying, locality. My initiate differences in um, different styles. So, yeah. but uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I guess I kind of fell in love. I had a roommate in college that that was really into the blues, and I yeah. got, I got, I mean, but that was like the Chicago stuff. And uh -huh, I was like, yeah, you know, that was just. But, but I got exactly. quite into that. Um, and uh, I, mean, I played violin at the time, and mm -hmm. I had—I mean, I had no idea how to approach that because I was—I yeah. was playing classical violin. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. You were—were were, um, were you reading the dots? Well, I, that's what I had done previously. That, yeah, exactly, you know, and then yeah. To play the blues, there are no dots. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I, you know, at that time, I had no clue how to jump into it. But I, yeah. I ended up—I ended up getting a guitar from a friend of mine, and uh, blues slightly more accessible on a guitar. It's. It's, there's plenty of expression on a violin once yeah. you kind of get your figure your way around. But yeah. uh, at the time, so I got into that and I got into guitar for a long time. And I was in a band, and then there, I was in Olympia, Washington. And there's a man named Daniel Mudcat McKinstry. State Capitol. Olympia, Washington, State Capitol. <laughs> well, well played. Well Mudcat. Played. This man knows his American geography, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Daniel Mudcat McKinstry, who was yeah. playing, who was playing some of these old songs and playing yeah, right. the the Piedmont style picking yeah. with the, thumb, the alternating thumb and stuff, and uh, yeah, got way got way into him and started learning from him and yeah. you know went down I and mean, from there the, and then all the recordings. This is what we were saying about the blues names thing, you know, like his name's Daniel. Mudcat. Mudcat. And he lit and he had a bus down in the mud flats of Olympia. <laughs> but his mudcat. name was Mudcat before he ended up there. <laughs> right. So it was like, but he like he belonged to he belonged yeah. there for sure. Um, anyway, yeah, he uh, introduced me to it, and uh, you know, I mean, it's once you get in there, it's it's very compelling. I mean, yeah. it's amazing Sounds music. Man. That, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> once it's got you, it doesn't let it go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, anyway. it's like something you you you'd always go back to it, you know, because there's a there's an honesty there. Once yeah. you you know, because old old music is uh, it's about um, accents, like you're saying about the, the different fiddlers and things, you know, and every music has an accent and a flavor and a vocabulary that you speak when you when you play it. So um, for the blues, you know, there are certain things that if you wanted to stay in that vocabulary, you probably wouldn't play, you know, you probably wouldn't do this type of playing because it's not appropriate. Of course, 
you can always break those rules and create something new. But I, I enjoy I enjoy speaking, trying to speak the language of the blues, you know, and in the way that that certain old performers did that I that I grew up with and that inspire me. Um, for me, part of the the challenge is just trying to get get a sound that's close to those guys that I, I admire. That's one thing I do with the blues. Um, but you know, whenever you're playing music, there's always a little bit of yourself that comes through hopefully as well you know right, of course yeah you've yeah. got to bring something to yourself that's it can't help it i mean that's how that's essentially the process how the blues reinvents itself isn't mm, it? indeed anyway so let's so, hand it back to you we've talked right. about the we've talked about the early days yeah well slight diversion now. We're, we're, we're sort of speaking we're, of the blues let's do something else so. yeah well it's a slightly <laughs> slightly swingy territory here that we just straight into with leon there and then you know because um Dirk obviously plays quite a bit of swing and uh, plays with a band called Viper Swing and plays some gypsy jazz. And I have a gypsy jazz guitar, although I'm not a gypsy jazz guitarist, but I, I love I love Django and uh, just all the guys with moustaches, basically. You know, they're, they're, they're the guys. I see a pattern developing. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, all those great players. Um, so we're going to do a tune, a wonderful tune by a wonderful songwriter. This has become a kind of standard in the gypsy jazz repertoire, I believe. And it's a wonderful tune by Irving Berlin, who wrote all the tunes. If you were ever wondering who wrote the tunes, it was Irving Berlin. It was him. And if it wasn't him, it was Hoagy Carmichael. Oh and that's that's <laughs> all I got to say about it. So um, Irving Berlin, I, I believe... Talented men. Both very them. talented writers. They uh, wrote be the most beautiful songs in the old style. And um, Irving Berlin was born in Russia, uh, but left to run away to America with his parents and the, the, the vague snippet of story that I heard was that literally their house was burning as they fled, you know. Yeah, the it was, it was intense, yeah. 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 So this is his tune and it's called Russian Lullaby. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Just a plaintive little tune When baby starts to cry rock a
I'll tell you a thing about Irving Berlin. Um, obviously, he wrote White Christmas. Yes. Yeah, but did you know that he lost a child on Christmas Day? Oh, my God. So the next time you listen to that song, That's which well, everyone yeah. thinks is this perfectly twee or rosy, wonderful... It's such an aching melody when you think about it, isn't it? It's incredibly That aching. Christmas Day was the day he lost the child on, so just those lyrics. That's great information. The next time you listen, it, you'll, never well, hear it, you'll never hear it the same way I'm again. Learning, I'm learning the, the, the melody, that, Where? the instrumental guitar piece for a, for a Christmas gig, because I think it's just one of those oh, right, so. amazing melodies. And you only so, get to so, play so. it, you know, because I, I, I looked at it the other week, and my partner was in the house. He's like, what's with all the Christmas tunes? Aye. I was like, well, I'm getting ready for I'm working. December because, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, these tunes don't learn themselves. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> you got to start learning yeah. them in November, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but uh, she wasn't too chuffed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she thought it was a bit early. Well, as you know, Slade <laughs> recorded Merry Christmas, everybody, in, a, in somewhere like sunny California in July. <laughs> yeah. They, right. they planned ahead. They got it, it right. right. They got it right. Yeah. Anyway, just a few, uh, a few, what's the word? Notices. Yes. From the, the World Wide Web of Wonder. Uh, Phil Hopwood says, love it. Nice one, fellas. <laughs> Robert Barnett, or Barnett, uh, thanks for lifting my spirit tonight. No higher compliment. Yeah, that's really nice. No, no, yeah. Uh, uh, someone called Liz Tange says, great tunes, boys. Amazing musicians. She also says, at what age did you first grow a moustache, Toby? <laughs> I was a grown-ass man when I first grew my first. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was about 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was on the, on the back of Daniel Day-Lewis's appearance in uh, uh, There Will Be Blood. And I was right, like, right. That's I reckon I'm me. about ready for that. <laughs> That's for me. Yeah, and Estella Stewart, love this. Anyway, so, nice. right, thank so you, people. let's keep Estella and the other folks happy with another yeah. one. All right, we're going to do uh, another one from the, the Leon Redbone repertoire. Uh, this is called Shine On, You Harvest Moon. was mighty dark and you could hardly see the moon refused to shine there's a couple sitting with the willow tree for love they pine the little maid was kind afraid of darkness so she said I think I'll go boy began to smile looked up in the sky told the moon his little tale of woe And by his side's a girl he left so true All he has to say is won't you be my bride For I love you Why should I be telling you this secret When I know well that you can guess Harvest moon will smile Shine on all the while If my loving gal would answer you yeah. Shine 
and it's shining on still. Yeah, so that's that's that one. Are you changing that instrument? Are you yeah, are you tune, swapping over? Tune and change. That's a swap. In which time. case, right here on the Limbic TV Cocktail Lounge of Love, we're going to uh, we're going to flip it right back to another video of Toby and his uh, his new uh, his newfound uh, talent for archery. Let's have another look at Toby doing his archery thing. You'll like this one. <laughs> Very good. This one's hilarious. This one's hilarious. Yeah. Once the ball fits, roll it! I'm assuming this is... Yeah, that'll be tough. Hopefully, hopefully it's muted. Yeah, hopefully this is As muted. they're... Aye. We'll be ruining the video. They're professionals. Right? They'll, they'll, they'll get this thing together like... It'll be seamless. Seamless. The second video will load any time, any second soon. I can see it. Activity, it's playing. It's now playing. There you are. <laughs> <Tilt and madness. laughs> Just thought I'd try it. Why not? <laughs> you only live once. Yeah. Is Is that that the you won't be living for much longer. Is that in the back garden? Yeah, totally. Well, can I just say, Toby, your lawn care regime is appalling. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. If you need a gardener, I'll leave you, I'll leave you my phone number. Yeah. This, what I can see there is a horror story. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, right. yeah, he's coming in again, and he's. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. No. Ah, oh, that's. that's it. I'm not sure what you're watching. Robin Hood flying through the glen. Yeah, it's still there. It's Beautiful. Still there. I see. I see. Oh, it's a repeat on loop. Yeah. Well, what can you was say it, about that? that? I mean, the raw power of that, that got to me, you know what I mean? I mean, if that I'm a bit thing, I'm a bit if, that, up myself. If, that isn't, if that hasn't gone viral by the end of tonight, you know what I mean? There's just, there's yeah. no justice in the world. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. I've got ten, tens of views. Tens so, of views. what, aye, just, just a brief exploration. I mean, obviously, yeah. You were saying earlier about the zen aspect yeah, of this archery. Is not Sorry, that. I'm covering up the microphone. Um, uh, I guess this that didn't look very zen. It looked no, a wee bit energetic. This, this was the bit, opposite. It looked a bit masculine. Yeah, it was. Puissant. It was, Can I say puissant? I love that word. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so where it comes from is basically, if 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 you think about historical archery, it was a, a, a military practice to shoot the bow. Ah. So in a very real sense, historically speaking, archers would not have been required to stand still at a static target and just stand and aim at ten meters and twenty a meters little, and a little, a little circle. Disc, yeah. You know, they would be running around on the field of battle and have to take evasive action ah. and return fire. Yeah. And that's just a standard military And hitting move. meat on yeah. the hoof. So from my point of view, I was thinking, right, how would I take dramatic evasive action, i.e. jump the heck out of the way and, and shoot an arrow? So my goal was basically just to run, jump and shoot the bow and not really concern myself too much with landing. Ah, yeah. Just Just get the... Commit, commit to the jump. How did that landing feel, Com by the way? Commit to the shot oh, and then deal with the sore. land. That's why I saw it. I was quite sore for a few days after that one. I wouldn't recommend doing it to anybody at home, but it was something I'd never done. I thought, I'll give this Definitely a try. don't do it on concrete. Definitely not. That's why I let the grass go so long in the <laughs> backyard. I'm glad you said on Crete after you said the... C <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, there is there is a guy. Definitely um, don't do it on. There's, there's, a, there's a guy who's gotten pretty big in the last year on YouTube called Charlie Zel Zelnoff, I think his name is. All right, I'll and get the does, link off to you. He does Charlie's it? running archery. That's the thing. All right. His channel's doing pretty well. So so he, he um, is he actually running? He runs and shoots. And that's Brilliant. his that's his bag. Um, I actually sent him that video. Surely was, that's called a quiver. His archery bag. Hey, hey, hey. I, sent, I sent him that video. This is he, just my quiver, yeah. man. He said you're insane. Aye, aye, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sort of got an. I got a little vibe of it that you're maybe, again, this could be pretentious, but you're maybe planning ahead for the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Well, that was you know picking this up when I did. It was definitely in the back of the mind. That yeah. It might be a wise thing. To, yeah. To learn. Yeah. Get Absolutely. yourself tooled up, as we say. Take I mean? out a zombie or two. Yeah. Do you know anything about the ancient Parthians? 
I don't know much about on, them. But on, the, on the Asian steppe. Now, mm. they were skilled horsemen, right, and yeah. their particular thing was they pretended to run away or ride away, oh, of course. but they could actually yes. shoot That's... over their shoulder yes. and shoot as the horse was going that way. The arrows That's were going right. that way. And, and the other military forces weren't doing that. Like European forces weren't doing that at all. Yes. So, yeah. Well, it's a fascinating subject, archery, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, here's, a, here's, a, here's a random, random, random question for you. What great world riv river has an archery connection in its name? And the answer is... I'm going to go to the Amazon. It is the Amazon, yeah. Ah. That is from the Greek, a, ma, a, meaning without, mazon is from breast, oh. as in mastectomy, the wow. Greek. Oh, and that comes from the story, that came from a story, the ancient oh, Greeks the had a story women. of, of yeah. warrior women who reputedly cut their breast off so they, so they were without a breast, uh, yes, a, mazon, right. yes. to, to, so they could pull the, the bolstering. commitment. Yeah. yeah. And when the Spanish yeah. went to, when the Spanish went, they went up the Amazon River and they were met with a, a fierce tribe up mm. there. And they said, these women, they're like these, these women in these stories about these Greeks from way back. So they caught, that's why they called it the Amazon yeah. River. So, not only has this been instructive about the blues, we're, we're learning ancient history today. <laughs> All sorts I mean? of things, yeah. Tell your friends, tune in to Limbic <laughs> TV. It's all happening. Be you know educated. I mean? yeah. yeah, get yourself educated. <laughs> exactly. So, anyway. Well, with the emphasis you're back, on... You're back on the national. Back on the Nash. With back an emphasis on the, on, on, the, on the mess of the Mesopotamians. <laughs> Hang on, something's gone wrong here. I've tuned it, but I've tuned it wrong. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Let's just check. So, e, that's good. This is the thing about these blues players and their blues tunings. Oh, yeah. You've got to keep your wits about you. Luckily, you're only playing six strings. You're not Big Joe Williams here playing, yeah. playing nine. You know what I mean? Nine, yeah. No, that nine, nine strings. How do you play nine strings? Same as you do six. Badly, in my case. <laughs> Poorly, very, very poorly. My apologies, uh, I misread the calculations. I got one of those uh, early days, and I picked up the guitar, you know, I'd started listening to blues, so, wh who was it, um, Stefan Grossman? Mm -hmm. You know Stefan Grossman? Oh yeah, wonderful. So I got, I got one of his books, and it had the, the tablature. You Don't know try I mean? this at home, no. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Well, that, that's essentially the lesson I got from that. I, I think I, I dedicated about 10 minutes of my life to it, and I said, <laughs> this is, Way too complicated, and I just not. And I says, I'm going to just leave it to other people to do this. You know what I mean? It's, this is not for me. This is not my quiver, not my bag. You know what I mean? It's probably a very wise move. Hey, hey, exactly. Anyway, are you tuned up? I'm are you tuned in up. The right? I'm good. Yeah, we're going to do a, a Do Roller Blues now by Garfield Ackers, and this is a tune that I, I actually came across fairly recently. But you will recognise lots of the lyrics and the, the general vibe of it. Is it's been played by many of the blues men as rolling and tumbling. Ah, yeah. uh, Muddy Waters yeah. played it, you know, many, many blues Emerald players. It's, it's a standard. Um, but this earlier version was called Do Roller Blues by Garfield Eckers, and it's, it's from the early 30s. And Don't. The, do Roller. Oh, Do Roller Blues. Do yeah, roller, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The way he played it was quite idiosyncratic. So I've, I've kind of, I'm playing a mixed version that's got a bit of Garfield. I'm intrigued Eckers to hear this, Do Roller. I'll give it, I'll give it a This is a new shot. one on me. So, yeah. It, it was a tune that I'd played previously as the rolling and tumbling. and just, it thought it was cool to try a different way of playing yeah. it, you know? So, here we go.
wake up in the morning, find your door roll up, go. And you wring your hands, find my time ain't long. Traveling Riverside Blues right. by Robert Johnson. That, isn't it? Yeah. Down in the bottom. Howlin' Wolf. It's it's got the same, no, the same flavour yeah, in it, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Remember, Robert remember, Johnson remember, played remember. it more like. Yeah. 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 So it's the same riff, yeah, but yeah. Robert just adds that tight syncopation oh, yeah, exactly, that, that yeah. defines him. And Garfield Acker's version and is more course, loose and fluid. Ah, you know? yeah. Um, but the thing with Johnson is, it, it's so piercing. It's. And it's the vocalisation on top of what he's doing when he... Yeah, you can't me, compute, you're like, he can't be that good at singing and that ah, good exactly, playing the guitar. Yeah, yeah. And when you get inside his guitar work, the subtle variations from verse to verse, yeah. he never plays, he, you know, he doesn't have a yeah. set pattern that he just plays throughout the tune, it's always it's slightly different. Um, and the little... I could go on about it, but the little, I know, uh, exactly. the little things he does are so so brilliant. Uh, yeah, he's the, the long dist the, the Marfan disease. You know what I mean? With the fingers, <laughs> right. the long. You see, not picture. You know, with the fingers. Yes, he's yeah, he's playing that. It's like he's got about. Chord. He's between his. Oh, it's yes, just like there's about one, twelve yeah. frets. Like, how, how? Yeah, he's photoshopped it. Yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> the, the length of his fingers is well like this. You know what I mean? And see, like, there's you know, have you heard that they had Marfan's disease? I didn't know that. I've seen that. I've seen that. That's seen essentially one of them. <laughs> if you've got Marfan's disease, that's aye. But your fingers become uh, one of these bizarre things. One yeah. of your all your limbs become elongated. Right. Uh, and you die young. Mm. So, well, there are benefits to it then. Surprising they didn't call him Marfans Robert Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Marfans. <laughs> so he might have died with Marfans disease, of what we're saying. He wasn't necessarily poisoned by jealous husbands uh, and X Y Z and yeah. you know all that kind of thing. But I, uh, I suppose. Jealous Husbands makes for better blues mythology than yeah, he died yeah. of Marfan's disease. The and then, in which case, I, Marfan well, Robert Johnson. Called. He should have been called, surely. That's the rule, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's what decided tonight. Yeah. Yeah, he sold, he sold, his, he sold his Satan, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to, he sold his soul to Satan, as opposed to, no, he spent a long time really playing difficultly. <laughs> Here, you want to load up? Can I do that? Yeah. This is the list. Look at this. Toby. This Bo's, is, Bo's, this on, is, Bo's on the bar, hang on. This is the Limbic Cocktail Lounge of Love. If this man wants a drink, my God, this man's getting a drink. You know what I mean? Doc, feel free to oh, avail yeah, yourself. I'm, I'm happy with the... I've We've got, got beer. I've got this homebrew that needs drinking. Is that your own homebrew? Yeah, indeed, indeed. We've got spice sure drums. We've got gins. Libations. Got, aye, aye. Help yourself. Cheers. If at any point you get tired of playing the fiddle, just come on just up here and help yourself. Right. Yeah, Dirk's like, yeah, I'm tired. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. Never mind the internet audience. The yeah. drinking, the drinking session I'll just, has I'll just begun. Just through the next two songs. Yeah. In a flat. Right. Yeah. So, so, anyway. Okay. So um, we got a couple more, couple more to do. Uh, so I'll do this one. There is the quiz. Remember. Oh, look. Yeah. Well, should we do one and have a bit one, of quiz we time? We did one quiz or question already. Oh, no, no, that was just... That was just a random thrown in. That was just a bonus question. Yeah, well, exactly. Hopefully it's not the, the Quiz Arts Hadarax, but that's a uh, different story. Right, so you, what, how many you got to play? Two or three? Do, do two, two more. You've got two, two more. more? Yeah. <laughs> this just in. This just in, <laughs> yeah. Uh, reporting. <laughs> this just in is... Apparently... Um, we're talking about, let me see now. 
Yeah, on the on the World Wide Web, uh, Saddam Hussein has just said <laughs> has just said hi online. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, all right. So if we've touched Saddam Hussein. This this evening's taken a rather surreal yeah, you know yeah, I mean, curveball there thrown in. Interesting. I, I do actually like to think that Mr. Hussein, you know what I mean, if he's this still around, enjoys the blues. This is the, this is the, the time where the veil is thinner than other times in the. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. The veil yes. of Maya. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I think, think anything's you know, possible. I, I, you know, he just uh, said hi, though. Is that what he said? Hi. He, say, he said hi. You know, nice, that's, that's convivial. Kind of, yeah. I'm nice just saying, look, Saddam, I'm, I'm sorry about all of those CIA shenanigans and all the shit they yeah. pulled. And the, and the, the, the strings Park. they pulled behind the scenes. Americans. You know. Yeah. And the, and the South Park. Let's uh, not yeah, forget about that. The, yeah, they ribbed, they ribbed you pretty good. Remember South Park? I mean, oh, yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. yeah. It didn't come off looking that good, did he? <laughs> you got a rough time on South Park. <laughs> no. At least you got on We're South Park. sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. and, uh, and the, 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 the merciless takedown of uh, Kim Jong-il in... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, uh, well, yeah well, he hasn't said hi yet, so we'll leave What's the film? Yeah. Come on, what's the film? Let's leave him out of it. Uh, uh, that was Team, America. Team America. <laughs> Team America. Team America. How could I forget? <laughs> Team America. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Well, well, I like to thank Mr. Kim Jong, or whatever his name is. I believe Kim's his surname, even though it's first. Yeah, I, oh. yeah, I think he, he could dig the blues. He, you know what I mean? he, he, he could say hi. Yeah, he could say hi, and then we'd give him a shout. It gives out. him a new That's human a, yeah. dimension. I, I like to think, you know, if he was sitting listening to <laughs> Reverend Gary Davis or something, you know what I mean? He's he the type the of cat. He's so, so lonely. Ah, so sure lonely. He's the type of cat who'd buy up all the old vintage Stella twelve strings and keep them in a, you know, temperature controlled room. Yeah. Those guitars should be out being played by ah, exactly. poor folks like it's us. Like, it's like the people who have the other, who have these guitars and Steven then you on, oh, I, 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 <laughs> he's got honestly, he's got half of the great Segal. guitars. Yeah, like he's got a Jimi Hendrix original strap. Has he really? you know, he's got a, and he doesn't play the guitar. Well, he plays, but does he know it? He doesn't play well, like Jimmy. <laughs> as long as it's now and again, he dusts it off the wall. Yeah, and he's got too many guitars to play them all. He's got, you know, he ah. he made his money and he's bought. He just got into buying vintage guitars. He's got an insane collection. All right, I've yeah. been in houses, you know, where I've seen a nice guitar on the wall and I've said, "Oh, you're a player," and I said, "No, no. I just like it as an object." There are wonderful and then things. And you feel always like, well, it should be really be getting played. You know what I mean? I feel, I feel that they're not ornaments. I think it's okay if somebody wants to spend their money on an instrument and keep it as an ornament. That's ah. up, that's up to them. I mean, ah. that's the right of a ownership, Ish. I guess. But you know, I, I'm of the opinion that um, you can buy a guitar, right? But yeah. you're, you're only ever the custodian of a guitar. Like guitars will live out, outlive you, like a good one. This well, has been through so many hands before it came. You say to that, Toby. No, I mean, I'm I'm the destroyer when yeah. it comes to guitars. <laughs> destroyer of worlds. Yeah, but I like cars to, I and, like, car, cars I, and guitars. I'm I like the, to I'm think, the end of the line. You know I like I mean? to think of these possessions as things yeah. that are just passing through, and they'll go to someone else. Yeah. And you don't really own them; you just look after them yeah. for the time. And they'll that you bring have. out new possibilities. Know hope I mean? so. Yeah. yeah, hope so. Especially, you know. Well, well, well made craft pieces like ah, violins, yeah, exactly, guitars, yeah. they, they yeah. last for eons. So you've seen that's, that's close to 100 year old, that thing. Yeah, right? yeah, 99. What about the fiddle? We but, don't know. There's no, there's all no right. date in it, but it's, no, it's definitely been around. It's got some surgery that's yeah, happened and it's, stuff. It's, yeah. it's had a bit of work on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, been, it's got a few scratches, it's got a few, you know, right. you can tell it's been well bowed, right. shall we say. <laughs> Keep it clean. We're just. <laughs> Yeah, have we passed the watershed? Well, I think we must be. Anyway, let's hear some more blues. Toby Watershed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to do, uh, we'll take it back to the Mississippi Hill Country, the origins of the Hill Country blues with uh, Fred McDowell, who we spoke about earlier. Uh, and this is his tune that's often called Early This Morning, or sometimes referred to as Write Me A Few Of Your Lines. <laughs>
Roscoe from Ruby Tuesdays gave you a shout out. Oh, a nice one. Estella's Roscoe loving it. Galloway. Mark Smith says hi, guys. Wonderful. Do you know Mark Smith? I don't know if it's the Mark Smith who used to play drums to the Stone Toller Rollers. I don't know. If it is, yep. Mark, hope you're doing well. Max Smith. Anyway, yeah, I know. The business, the sharp business end of why we're here. Toby, I believe you have product. So maybe you could <laughs> punt that to the. I mean, you've got a worldwide web of. How, did, yeah. how many did we say? I, I, I believe it was in the countless. Countless, yeah. exactly. Oh, I, I believe know. it was in the countless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know so, if I've got much to sell. <laughs> oh, that means the price is going up as we speak. <laughs> yeah, scarcity. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Doc? Anything to sell? Uh, no, not today. Yeah. Not today. And no, what about didn't you? Didn't come. You, didn't come armed with any selling points. Was so. it? I. You. Or maybe it was Toby mentioned. Do you play? In, you play in a swing band? Yeah, I play so in a band called Viper you got Swing. Any guy coming up? Nope. Nothing. No, no. No. Uh, <laughs> not re- no. You know. Before. No, you mean everything's. You know, everything's no, skewed back, you because know, of COVID. We've been. We've had quite a busy summer, but. Yeah. Um, it's been. Uh, no, not right now. Actually, we're we're at a bit of a low. Yeah. Back before the lockdown, I like to. I, I remember the days we used to. We had a running gig at the Sheraton for right. years, uh, about five and a half years, doing the Sunday, the Sunday brunch, which we got to play, yeah. and then we got to eat. And you got to eat. Was, you now, guaranteed got fed once yeah, a week. You got to eat for free. I've lost so much weight during lockdown. All right. Because I never get fed anymore. Yeah. 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 The gourmet, <laughs> gourmet food. Oh yes. New yeah, food. I mean, I don't think I don't think a buffet is coming back anytime soon. No, I don't know. No. Yeah. I don't know how. It's yeah. Oh. Well, it seems we're going backwards now at the moment, so who that's, knows what's That's something it's going I'm to never be. gonna forgive the crowd. I mean, live for. music's gonna literally be the last thing back, isn't it? Essentially, well, it's I, back. I mean, buffets I, there after is, that. There is. I'm back. Die. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> like, like Lethal Weapon Two. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like Mr. Mr. Lee, Christopher Lee, and so many Dracula movies. Hell, hell. You've reconstituted yourself, pulled yourself together. <laughs> well, Saddam right? Hussein's back. Like so, Lestrade, you know. the vampire. Yeah. <laughs> pulled himself together of raw evilness. Know what I mean? Anyway, all right, so what was the name of your band? Come. Viper Swing. Viper you can Swing. Look us up at viperswing.com. So, aye. So are you out there on the YouTube? Oh, on the world, on all the webs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, all webs. All Available webs. on Spider all webs. webs. All webs. <laughs> Yep. So, mm. now that you've wha- your whistle, aye, no, I mean, aye, you. and you, you're suitably tuned up. I think I'm tuned up. Are we in the, yeah. We're in the, key, in, the, in the key of G. Oh, in the friendly um, key of G. Fire. Friendly. I've been pushing Dirk tonight because I, I like to play in G sharp tuning, uh, no, um, which is a bit mean. Fiddles love G sharp, let me tell you. Tell me. Yeah. That's all those, just plain You can ornery. kiss all those it? juicy open strings ornery. goodbye. You know the famous story with. <laughs> Chuck Berry, you know, they had Keith Richards and all that oh, play, yeah. but they insisted on playing like everything in E flat, E flat, nice. G sharp, yeah. they're all, and they would do it at the, the drop of a hat, and they go, "Don't do it, don't do it," especially the bass player. For <laughs> God's sake, don't do it. They just launch into something E flat. It's like, oh it is, God, it is problematic. Um, yeah, G sharps. That's just E yeah. flat's better than G sharp. To be honest. You know, yeah. you 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 gotta you gotta play in every key. If you want to play with me, <laughs> <laughs> he set he set the bar high. You know what I mean? He set the bar very high indeed. There, well, every I tell you key. What, I, I, I uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I never play an A sharp. Oh, no, don't you? Oh, <laughs> a sharp doesn't exist in my vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I play, I play in B flat though. Oh, yeah. E, I. Yeah. E sharp, don't <laughs> yeah. touch it. No, I, mean, oh, I wouldn't touch that. Don't yeah. touch Ten it. Foot, that's <laughs> that's like some quantum key. I never <laughs> did. Like, it's tones that are barely discernible in this, in this <laughs> yeah. paradigm that we're yeah, no, no, no. you, you, you need to access some of the higher dimensions to get yeah. into there. It's microtones. I think these are the microtones that essentially that gave birth to the why it's called the devil's music, you know what I mean? Because mm. the Western tradition was all very, every note that was sung, every syllable mm. of a song was given a tonal value, whereas, cool. you know, the melismatic style of the, the, the blues players 
And then, What's that? That's yeah, got to be the devil's note right when there. When you pull that string, you're bending it into microtonal, out of tuneness. You know what I'm saying? So this yeah. is uh, that, that that's roll. wrong. That interval used to be called the devil's interval. Was it? Mm-hmm. Right. And it was illegal in church music. <laughs> illegal. <every day>. Yeah. <laughs> you could get these bad boys chopped off. Yeah. Yeah. You've played. You exactly. <laughs> you've played what, what are you doing there? Hands that's of not, sinned. Uh, Bill's hands of sinned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not proper. Well, it, this seems like an appropriate moment to play some soothing, uh, redemptive gospel music to Sounds close out the show. Me. Hey, listen, um, you, you're definitely in my bag now. Redemptive <laughs> gospel yeah. music. In your quiver. Can, if I get the spirit, can I can I holler? Holler, join in, whoop and holler. There's a, I'm there. there. Basically, the tune the tune is actually a modern I need day. release. It's a modern day uh, gospel piece, but it sounds like a vintage pre-war piece, and it's by Eric Bibb. Ah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Fully, fully uh, in the modern era. Fully modern. Yeah, but it's it's called "Don't Let Nobody Drag Your Spirit Down," and it's it's whenever you hear me say that, you can just say that right on back. Yeah. Um, you, you'll hear me do it. And Better call and response. Just join in, yeah. Yeah. Better line and out. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Just like uh, on the Isle of Lewis. You know, aye, exactly. How we do it. Aye, aye. That's where they invented the blues, aye, don't aye, you know? Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly. Aye, aye. But uh, like you're new in the churches and that, you can. Well, you get some serious blues if, if you come to the playground and the swings are all chained up. What's the thing? on the Isle of Lewis on Sundays. Aye, aye. Not on a Sunday. You might slip. You might slide. Stumble and fall. Whenever I'm walking up to heaven, won't let nobody turn me round. I'll, I'll never let anybody drag my spirits down Don't again. Do <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway, um, 
It's time for the blues quiz. Now, this is going to test your metal, let me tell you. You know what I mean? I thought it was blues. Yeah. Yeah, this might... Your reputation could be ruined after this. You know what I mean? I don't know. Your reputation. Your blues reputation. Your blues rep, shall we say. Your blues rep. You know, that blues rep shit. Your blues rep shit might be out the window at the end of this. Uh... It's the blues or blues quiz. Mm -hmm. Blues or booze? No. Well, <laughs> blues or lose? No, blues <laughs> or blues. It's the blues or blues quiz. Okay. Are you getting the concept? I think I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Now, once these backstreet maestros, backstreet, back room. Sorry, that that was a Freudian slip. Don't back mean backstreet. None of these these people have anything to do with anything going on in the back street. Know what I mean? These backroom boffins, <laughs> uh, I believe uh, Sean's handling the images, and uh, he's going to get up uh, number one image. Now, ah, can you see these two people, Toby? Right. So one of these is Blues, i.e., they play for Chelsea, and one of these is Blues, i.e., they played Blues. Right. Now. Okay. So. Who said, here's a quote from one of them, right? There's a big crop of English right backs and a lot of them are very good as well. I need to carry on working hard and keep on improving. Now, who said that? The guy on the right. Was it, was it Rhys James Chelsea Blues Chelsea or was it Elmer James Blues uh, Blues? Yeah. So, well, what do you reckon? Uh, uh, Definitely you, you, Elmore James. Yeah, Surely that, he would have said something like that. I think Surely. I think I recognised that in one of his early recordings. He definitely <laughs> uh, he had a thing about those right backs. Yeah, well, it's definitely not uh, definitely not Elmore James, uh, the, the wonderful slide maestro there. Yeah, the exactly. Right. The, the maestro himself. Yeah, electric slide. You know what I mean? There would be without Elmore so, James, there would be no uh, you know early years Peter Green and Fleetwood Mac. No, no How's exactly. that going to exist no without Beck, Elmore no, James? You name it. The it list goes, goes on and on. Yeah. Uh, you're right, correct. Reese James, Chelsea. You know what I mean? Okay, one for you, Dirk. Uh, next one up. Uh, yeah, can you see those two images there? Right, now, who said, it's very easy to learn and very difficult to master? Now, I could give you a clue here and say, whoever said that, that we're talking about the harmonica. Was it Sonny Terry? Blues, or was it John Terry? Blues. Ah, yes. You guys are really giving me the difficult. The I, difficult I did one say here. I did. I did give you a heads up that this was dashed difficult. I do know a thing about Sonny Terry, though. Uh, he played with a fellow named Brownie McGee. He did, yes, mm -hmm. for years. And by the end of their oh, musical other, relationship, yeah. they actually had to enter the stage from different sides. <laughs> yeah, they loathed each other. They sat down on the chairs and played some amazing music, and yeah. then they went the other yeah. way. The yeah. more popular stopped. they got, yeah. the more they hated each so other. So I'm going to have to go with Sonny Terry. Guys. Sonny Terry, <laughs> by God, sir, you're good. You're good. Correct. Right. If one of these footballers has a closet uh, musical abilities, we're screwed here, aren't we? Aye. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's very easy to learn and very difficult to, to master. That could have also been John football. Terry yeah, yeah. talking about maybe, I don't know, tying you know. his football laces or something. <laughs> you know, the, the one of these really difficult tasks. Yeah, the, the little shoulder feint. You yeah, know. putting on his own, put, yeah. fitting his own the, shin pads the, the and his Georgie socks. Best <laughs> yeah. step over. Anyway, number <laughs> three. Different conversations, but number three is for good. Toby. Uh, Sean. Sean, get it up. Ah, he's got him up. Can you see that there? Okay, these guys actually look kind of similar in a way. They're similar yeah. gels. Even I can't see that one. Yeah. Is that no actual picture of Sean himself? Anyway, right. Ah, yes. Now, who said the blues is the roots, the rest is the fruits? Was it... Willie Dixon. Was it Kerry Dixon, who played for Chelsea? <laughs> Or was it Willie, Willie Dixon, Dixon, who played for Chess Records? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Willie Dixon, who played for everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Played for everybody. Yeah, I, I know that quote by Willie Dixon, yeah. and uh, it was him that said it. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful it's, expression. It's it a sums up so much in yeah. so few words. He, and, he yeah. was a poet of the blues. He was the blues man. Yeah, Willie absolutely. was the blues. Most exactly. of the blues tunes that we've, uh, you know, we, like when I was talking about being younger and getting into the yeah. blues, you listen to all these things. Yeah. And you realise that he wrote half of them. He wrote half of you them. Know, yeah, exactly. Like the... yeah, yeah, exactly. So, right yeah. again, it was Willie Dixon. Okay, here's the last one in our short lived Blues of Blues quiz. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs>
This one's for you, Duck. Yeah, the pictures are up. Right, so... Who, do, who did the press describe as being someone who looks like Terry Yorath and shoots like Bobby Charlton? Was it Clive Walker, Blues, Chelsea? Or was it T-Bone Walker, <laughs> Blues? Careful, Derek. I've, I've never known T-Bone to be a shooter, so I'm going to have to go with Clive. By God, yeah. sir, you've nailed it. <laughs> you've actually nailed it. Yeah, well done. Absolutely brilliant. So... Yeah, you you can leave here well, contented with, with our heads held high and the blues rep, the blues <laughs> rep entirely intact. If intact. I could paraphrase T Bone Walker himself when he said, "I don't never kick no football." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> paraphrase. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the next up on Limbic TV is this Saturday, people. So if you want to choose, uh, tune in for that. That's Mother Almighty. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. There's only one place to be. Don't touch that dial or whatever it is, or don't click that mouse, or I don't know, but essentially, Lambic TV is the place to be. Um, yes, uh, and I've, I've been reliably informed by these backroom boffins, Toby, that you've got two CDs, one of whom, one of which is with Duck. Case notes, I believe. Yes, that's correct. So uh, recorded by our wonderful uh, technician Dave ah, here all right. in this very studio. Recorded so. right. Right here, yeah, in this room, many right years here. ago. Uh, so Case Notes features um, a bunch of musicians from the Edinburgh area right. um, guesting on the album. Yep. And it's quite a broad range of guests and styles that, v that veer from the stuff you've heard tonight outwards towards Celtic folk, the Greek stuff. stuff. Dirk is on the earlier album All right. called Sleight of Hand. Sleight of Hand. The, the ah. album that preceded that, and that was strictly entrenched in the American roots right. of the yeah, blues yeah. and gospel okay. and country yeah, yeah. styles of the pre-war era, so Dirk obviously is on that album. Yeah. Um, so if someone wants to hear those albums, what do they do You can go about straight it? over to bandcamp.com, yeah. search for Jack of Diamonds, mm -hmm. or, or my name, Toby Mottishead, but yeah. it, they were recorded under the pseudonym of Jack of Diamonds. Oh, okay. Um, those two albums, and they are up there, and they're well worth a listen, yeah. All right, well, you heard it here first, people. <laughs> Get out there, start digging, you know what I mean? Anyway, have you got one more for us? Oh, yeah, we could do one more. Let's do one more and as, a, as a swan song for the evening. You, know what cool. you sure you don't want another drink, Duck? You know what I mean? Oh, my God, the, I'm good. Yeah, the no, night no, is no. young. <laughs> the night yeah. starts here. You know what I mean? So, just want to thank everyone in the back room for putting this gig on. Thanks to Toby. Thanks to Duck. It's been great, let me tell you. So, And we'll see you next time. Limbic TV. We're going to hand it over to the guys one more time.
mama, you got to move. Play now. If it keep on raining, the levee's gonna break. If it keeps on raining, the levee's gonna break. That old water gonna rise, and gonna have no place to stay. Memphis Mini. And the levees have broken. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening and good night.